I think Superstorm Sandy was a wake-up call. Nobody expected the severity of the flooding, myself included, that actually happened. But the real question is, can we as a community, as a city, as a region, allow this to happen again? My uh, storm surge group at Stony Brook University has been looking at various options of how the city, in the long term, can protect itself against uh, storm surges in an era of climate change and rising sea level. I've recently returned from a trip to the Netherlands where I studied their regional protection systems. The Dutch have built up the sand dunes along most of their coast on the North Sea. Some places 30 feet high, these sand dunes are wide, several hundred feet wide. They're not walls, they're not really levees. That protects much of the country, but we have to look to Russia, the St. Petersburg, the beautiful city, the Venice of the North. They've built a ring of protection around their city. It's an elevated highway, surrounds the low-lying city that's built on the delta of the river Neva. And in addition, this, this highway extends into the ocean. And so cars and trucks travel along the top there are large gates that are normally open to allow the ships in and out, but if a storm surge is coming down the Baltic Sea, they shut these gates for a few hours, holds back the sea surge, and the city is protected. And we can learn from that technology of the Europeans what would be best for New York City. The best solution that I've been promoting is two barriers. One would stretch the five mile gap between Sandy Hook, New Jersey and Far Rockaway on the western tip of Long Island. And that would protect the city against surges coming up from the ocean from the south, but there would need to be a second barrier in the Upper East River, near the Throgs Neck Bridge, for those who know where that is, and that would protect a second source of surges that are really quite dangerous, and there's surges coming down Long Island Sound from the east. People ask me, well, five miles, that seems a very wide sort of barrier, but it's worth remembering that, in fact, the water out there in the ocean is very shallow. It's only 20 feet deep, and so it would be relatively easy engineering-wise to build a, an elevated highway, it could serve multi-purpose duty as a storm surge barrier, as a interstate toll road bypass from uh, New Jersey to Long Island. It could have light rail across it between the major airports, uh, Newark and Kennedy. So this may make it attractive in terms of finding a revenue stream that would pay for it. Away from the entrance to, to New York Harbor where storm surge barriers would be appropriate, those, that line of protection would need to be extended both down the Jersey shore to the south and to the east on the south shore of Long Island with uh, enhanced sand dunes. We're talking about building up the sand dunes maybe 25, 30 feet. This is what the Dutch do. They would need to extend as far as it could be afforded. This would uh, have a major impact in some respects in that those communities that are protected would lose their view of the ocean. The Dutch have had to face this. I visited beautiful little coastal towns that were safe and secure, and they've traded the view for security. So communities are going to have to make those kind of decisions about what they want for the future of their, their homes, their communities. But the engineering is, is not rocket science. It's already been proven in Europe. It could be easily done. It's really a matter of having political will to take the bold step to do it. Thank <laughs> you.